Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our devotional. Tom and Cher coming to you representing the, Men the Monaco Pentecostal Church of God. It is Tuesday, January 25th. It is minus 11. That's not wind chill. That's the it's, straight temperature in Rhinelander this morning. It's a little cold this morning. It is. Our doggy didn't even want to go outside. Yeah. But the thing is, is it's minus 25 wind chill on top of it. Yeah, so. don't tell me. It's pretty <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. I don't <laughs> stay in my house and be toasty. So. Yeah. So I was thinking yesterday I should go to the grocery store because tomorrow's supposed to be even colder. Yeah. Minus 25 temperature yeah so so but i didn't so i'll have to go tomorrow and regardless of the temperature even though the cars don't like to they start but yeah. they don't like it any more than i do so. all right so um we're back we are back it seems like it's been a long time yes five days yeah i think our last one was uh, wednesday yeah so are we back there Restart it. There we go. So, anyway, yep. we just want to say good morning to you guys. We miss you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad. In it. Yes, for sure. So, so we're, we're happy to be doing our devotion. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about the conference this morning, um, not extensively because we'd be here all day. Right. But, uh, I, I will say that. Uh, the national leadership was there, and uh, everybody greeted us, and it was it was amazing. Uh, we learned a lot. Uh, we heard things preached uh, that we hadn't heard in that manner before, and I did put links to the first four sessions. I'll do the yeah. last one this morning um, to the uh, to the those that were recorded. Yeah. And all of the, the general sessions were recorded. The, well, they used to call them breakouts. Now, now they're Cut labs. Labs are round table format rather than everybody going to a separate room. Right. So we really enjoyed ourselves. We learned a lot. We're bringing back mm -hmm. a lot of information, and that's when it's most important is when you bring, you know, takeaways, and bits, yep. bits and pieces of doggy bags. Yeah. <laughs> Away from a conference. So. They, uh, the host church, uh, Bethel Family Family's Worship Center. Worship Center, yeah. yeah. Um, they were very gracious. They, uh, in Indianapolis. In, yeah, they're in Indianapolis. And, uh, wow, what a church. Yeah. Pastor yeah. Russell Hilton and his whole family and the church. Wow, fantastic. Yes. We were impressed. Yeah. And, uh, they were very open to us. They had uh, people in the parking lot directing. And, uh, they were very cold. We thought it was beautiful down there. But, uh, <laughs> they were cold with yeah, the parking lot. Like 20 degrees, <laughs> 20 degrees or something like that. We thought it was gorgeous. But uh, Oh, and you were going to gonna talk about uh, the greeters. Oh, yeah. The greeters were, uh, I was going to do that later. But oh. The greeters were, uh, made us feel like we were a part of the family. From the guy standing outside directing traffic, uh, to, it's kind of like when somebody hugs you but doesn't actually hug you. It, it was just that kind of welcome. Yes. And then they also they had, uh, the worship team was fantastic. Yeah, I invited them I up. Mean, I said we needed a worship leader up in <laughs> Monaco. I said to this one girl on the worship team. Yeah. I don't think she wants to go to Monaco, Wisconsin. <laughs> she could barely handle leader. the cold in Indianapolis. So, <laughs> Indianapolis, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they had just, uh, uh, it was uh, unbelievable. If you ever have the opportunity to go to a conference or a leadership meeting like that, you got to go because uh, – you feel so small in such a big organization, but yet you're yeah. a part. You're a part of it. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Randy Lawrence is the uh, national youth director, and uh, he came over to us. He knew who we were. He'd seen yeah. our devotionals. and uh, That's cool. I just... Uh, People we didn't even know were 
recognized our faces yeah. from yeah. from Bishop either talking about us and introducing us or from our devotionals, which was wow. It was kind of surprising actually. Yeah. yeah. So good morning, David. My baby brother. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, let's get on with we'll talk. All right. About that one. I will I I will pray and Cher's gonna read the devotional about the greatest prophet. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We ask you to pour out your spirit upon us as always. And uh, just uh, put it on our heart what we should talk about this morning. And, uh, as we learn about John the Baptist and, and his ministry and his being the forerunner. Uh, so we thank you and uh, we just ask you to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, it's called The Greatest Prophet. Uh, we're reading from John 3, 22 through 37. It says, John 3, 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. That was one of our youth camp, or family camp. Themes? Themes, yeah. yeah. Jesus said in Luke 7, 28, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. I believe the story of John shows us the main reason Jesus called him the greatest prophet ever lived. I don't know, did we go out? Okay. John the Baptist spent 30 years in preparation for his ministry. He didn't enjoy the normal benefits of childhood or adolescence. He lived out in the desert, away from people, and separated unto God. Luke 180. There's a 180? Well, I don't know if that's a friend. We'll look it up. <laughs> but definitely, I've never heard of definitely John the Baptist lived out in the desert, and you've all heard it, uh, <laughs> wearing a uh, coat made of Camel hair and uh, eating honey and locusts. Good morning, Kathy. Anyway, um, one day he baptized. Oh wait, 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 wait. One day. Then finally, for approximately six months, he enjoyed success in ministry like no other man ever had. The multitudes flocked to the wilderness to hear him preach. He became the most influenced man in Israel and was known to the Roman rulers. Wow. One day he baptized Jesus at the Jordan River and proclaimed him the Messiah. Matthew 3.13-17 through 17 and John 1.29 From that moment on, the multitudes and even his own disciples began to follow Jesus in ever-increasing numbers. This would have destroyed most men. But when he quest was questioned about it, John replied, He must increase, but I must decrease. Shortly after he was in prison, Matthew 4.12, and after one and a half years in a dark cell, he was beheaded. Remember who wanted him beheaded? Yeah, the, uh, well, the, Daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law, yeah. yeah, his wife's daughter. Yeah. John's greatness didn't lie in his own success, but in the success of another. Jesus owed much of his success to the preparatory work of John. In our celebrity-conscious society, few people want to be the backup singer or the stage manager. He, we have adopted the mentality that unless we are in the limelight, we are nothing. That's not the way Jesus sees things. He taught in Matthew 23, 11, He that is the greatest among ye shall be the servant. Surely John the Baptist was the greatest prophet because he was a great servant to Jesus. His life in Jesus' commandment. Com com Commendation. Commendation. His, yeah, it just looked weird. Yeah. For him and all you need to inspire you, be a great servant to Jesus and everyone you meet today. So John, 
we just came out of the Christmas season and, and a lot of, well, I did and a lot of people I heard did uh, things from the Old Testament prophecies mm -hmm. about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are also prophecies about John. It says there are, he's a voice crying in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And when John's mother, uh, Mary, came to, to visit Elizabeth uh, while she was pregnant, it says uh, that that uh, John's heart leapt, wept, leapt in the womb. Uh, Mary or uh, Elizabeth could feel it, and so he recognized the Savior even then. And that has to be inspired by the Holy Spirit that mm -hmm. isn't of man. So, and then when uh, when Jesus uh, came to be baptized by John, uh, he said, "No, you need to baptize me." And uh, Jesus told him, "We all have our sign." Mm -hmm. You do what you do, and I'll do what I do. And then later, uh, John sent his disciples to talk to Jesus. And after uh, John was there, when uh, when God's voice spoke out, said, "This is my beloved Son," mm -hmm. yet he had his disciples ask Jesus, "Are you the the Messiah? Are you the one we've been waiting for?" He had all that information, but mm -hmm. he wanted confirmation. Jesus' only confirmation was, tell John only what you have seen, only what you have heard. Yeah. And tell him the blind see and the lame walk. Right. And in reference to the, the thing where it talks about how um, people want to be, you know, in the limelight or whatever, yeah. we have to remember that no matter who we are, uh, from the what they call the bishop to, you know, the person that's weeping the sidewalk or shoveling or yep. cleaning the toilets, all are servants of God and all are important. Um, it's not an easy job being in leadership, um, but <clears throat> we are servants of God and serving him is easy, makes it easy knowing that it we does. have a purpose and we all are servants. And uh, that God looks for the servant heart when he calls. Yeah. When he calls us, when he calls people. And don't feel like uh, you are insignificant in the kingdom of heaven. Because we're all special and we're all significant no matter what we do. As long as we're serving the Lord mm -hmm. and for the purpose of the kingdom, could. I guess you could say. Yes. It's important. We all have uh, things to do. And and if we're faithful in what the world might consider a little thing, mm -hmm. uh, God will give us other things to do. Yeah. Um, he is, you know, what's the verse? He, he who is faithful in a little uh, will too much. To much will be uh, yeah. added. I have that wrong. But uh, yeah. the idea is if you're faithful in, in what you do, uh, you will get more responsibility. So if you feel like God is tugging at your heart to do something in your church or in your neighborhood or your or your family or whatever, um, make sure that that is what you do because it's God's calling you. It's the Holy Spirit is calling you. And that's your purpose. So many people say, well, it's somebody else's job to do that. If you really feel like it's, uh, you feel a tugging or a angst to do something, that's the right word, yeah, anxiousness to do something, it's God calling you. And it's not of yourself, but it's of God. If God's asking you to, uh, suddenly you feel like you need to pray for somebody. Pray. Or you need to pray, yes. Or you need to reach out to that person. Reach out to them. Because that's God telling you that they are in need of you or something or him and if you ever uh, have you feel like god's telling you to do something and you uh, you need a confirmation check it in the word if, yeah. if it's in accordance to the word it's probably from god if it's not in accordance to, uh, with the word it's definitely not from god right <clears throat> there's many uh there's times where you know you suddenly you haven't thought of somebody for a long time and they're 
in your mind, they they pop mm -hmm. pop up in your mind, right immediately because that's the Holy Spirit, God telling you, yep. reminding you of that person, and there's a reason why you're being reminded, and that can happen, and then suddenly, after their that comes up, you come across it again, their name again, and or they contact. You right. saying, hey, do this or pray for this. And here it was. Yeah, they were going through something at the time. And yeah, and sometimes we get that confirmation and sometimes we don't, but right. it's all beneficial. Right. Uh, it's never a bad idea to pray for somebody. Right. So. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like we said, everyone's important in the kingdom Absolutely. of God. Absolutely. So um, don't, don't feel like you're inferior or whatever. Yes. Yeah. So another thing I wanted to say about the conference was, yeah. uh, there, as it, we were earlier talking about the guys that were the greeters at the doors and the, they, the ladies and gentlemen that handed out, they had these big, big plates of mints, which was a superior, that was an excellent idea because after you're singing and yeah. shouting and worshiping the Lord or talking, your, your throat gets dry. Or screaming, as some or of us were. Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, your throat gets dry, and you always think, oh, I need a mint. Or t as Tom says, if somebody offers you a mint, please take it. That, was, your, <laughs> that was my daughter's thing. Yeah. If somebody offers you a breath mint, you should probably uh, take it. So, uh, so that was a good idea. Sometimes you wanted handfuls of them. But, uh, yeah, I thought, you know what, we should have mints at the back of our church so when people walk in that if their throat gets dry from singing or whatever, that would be a good idea to have. So that's something we're implementing. But from the person that greeted us to the person that the bishop of the church, yep. uh, everybody made us feel welcome and made it known that the love of Christ. And, oh, man, if the whole world could be like that. And it was a very diverse church, which was awesome. Everybody served in the church. Yeah, it was. Red, yellow, black, and white. They were all precious in Jesus' sight. Right? So, um, yeah, that's one thing that we need to be as accepting it as this church was. Right, baby? Absolutely. All right, absolutely. Um, we have some prayers. Do you have anything else to say about the conference? Oh, we want to thank the people that supported us uh, to go to the conference. Absolutely. Yeah, we, had a, we, beautiful. we thank you. Uh, we had a fantastic time. We took a lot of uh, took a lot away from it. Yes. A little little bites here and there that we are going to be able to use for our church, and we're rip ready, roaring ready to go. Right. Right. All right. So, prayers. Um, this week we're going to pray for Victory Christian Outreach Center in Wisconsin Rapids. Mm -hmm. and Pastor David Pastor Michelson. Michelson. Michelson, yeah. Dave and Ruth. Uh, yeah. And uh, they were our pastors when we lived in Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, they are wonderful people. Uh, they were missionaries uh, to Russia around the time of the fall of the of the wall wow. and mm -hmm. they planted a church there and pastor sergey and maybe in an upcoming week we'll pray for his church the church they planted uh, they were in praying Russia. right they were praying for somebody that would speak russian to be a translator and of course god as he does uh, gave him so much more uh, guy grew into the role of pastor of that church when when they left and mm -hmm. They still have, I've heard him speak. He's a wonderful pastor. He's got a beautiful tenor voice. Um, so I kind of went down a rabbit hole. But yeah. we're praying for Victory Christian <laughs> Center <laughs> this week. Uh, we, uh, Pastor Dan and the Church of the Tabernacle uh, have issues with their furnace. And we're just praying for an inexpensive uh, solution for them. Mm -hmm. uh, Cher has some upcoming tests a week from today or a week from yesterday. Monday, yeah. She had uh, her follow up yesterday, and they decided they're going to do more tests. So uh, we're praying for the will of God, and we're thanking Him for that outcome. Yeah. So um, I will launch us. Okay. Heavenly Father, uh, 
We ask you to bless Victory Christian Center, Pastor Rapids, Pastor Dave and Ruth, and their worship team. Uh, I'm not going to start naming names, but I, I, uh, I just thank you that they're obedient unto you. Bless that congregation, bless that community, and uh, continue uh, to do a work, a work through them. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for Pastor Dan Eldridge at the Living Waters Tabernacle in Wisconsin Rapids. Lord, we thank you for his faithfulness to you, Lord. We pray that you uh, sort out the furnace, the heating situation, Lord, so um, inexpensive, um, so that they can continue their Sunday worship services, Lord. And I pray that um, you give people knowledge of how to handle that, Lord, and you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. We pray for Shara. She has tests upcoming next Monday. We thank you that healing is hers. Uh, we ask you to prosper her body even as her soul prospers. In the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No. We just want to thank you guys for keeping your eye on us and watching us and we pray that um you have a fantastic they have a fantastic day and that they keep jesus in their heart and smile at someone and uh show a light of jesus around their city absolutely you guys have a great day we love you bye now bye